guys, it's Doc Curry. By now, you've already heard that the CPI inflation numbers came in at 7.5% for January. So in today's video, I want to talk about what that means for the markets. Should you buy the dip? Should you wait for a further crash? What should you do? So let's get into it. Okay, as I said, the CPI inflation numbers came in at 7.5% for January, which was much higher than the 7.2% that was forecast. And once again, it was the highest inflation that we've seen in 40 years. Analysts now expect February CPI inflation to come in at 7.7%. Now that really spooked the markets because now the Fed needs to become much more hawkish and raise interest rates faster in order to fight this rising inflation. People are now concerned that either the Fed will hold an emergency meeting to raise interest rates sooner than March, or they might front load the interest rate increase. What that means is that the Fed might do a rather large interest rate hike in March, rather than the standard 0.25% rate hike. Some economists are calling on the Fed to raise interest rates by as much as 1% at the March meeting. Now, Jerome Powell doesn't really support this, so I highly doubt it's going to happen. But just keep in mind that the rate hike is a vote amongst all the Fed officials. So even if Jerome Powell doesn't fully support it, it might still happen if enough Fed officials vote on it. Now, James Bullard, one of the voting members of the Fed, said he now supports raising interest rates by 1% by July. That means that in the next three meetings, Bullard wants to raise interest rates by 1%. Now, that might occur all at once in March, or it could be a 0.5% rate hike in March, followed by 0.25% rate hikes at the next two meetings. The more Fed officials you feel the same way, the more likely it is that rates will increase faster than previously thought. And the futures markets are now pricing in a 99% chance of a 0.5% rate hike in March and a 100% chance for rates to be hiked by a total of 1% by July. Now, the high CPI inflation numbers that came out today also caused the 10-year Treasury to top 2% for the first time since 2019. That also helped push the markets down on Thursday. Now that this key psychological level has been broken, we could see the 10-year Treasury rise quickly, possibly to as much as 2.5%. And as it rises, that will continue to put more downward pressure on the stock market, especially the NASDAQ and the Russell. Also, it should be noted that even once the Fed does raise interest rates, that won't help the economy right away. For one thing, an interest rate rise of 1% won't have a major impact on inflation, especially an inflation rate of 7%. Typically, the Fed would have to raise interest rates to about double the inflation rate in order to get inflation down. That means the Fed would have to raise interest rates to 14% to slow down a 7% inflation. Now, the main reason they're not looking to do that is because they still believe inflation will slow down on its own starting in April. And that belief is based upon the fact that personal savings are now being depleted, so there will be less buying pressure. Also, supply chain issues are improving, which will help increase supply. And no new money is being printed to artificially prop up the markets. So as demand decreases and supply increases, that should lower prices. Regardless, the interest rate rises the Fed will do this year will still take months to make their way through the economy and slow down inflation even a little bit. Finally, keep in mind that the Fed meeting minutes from January are being released on Wednesday, February 16th. And that could move the markets again, just like it did last month. Remember that when the December Fed meeting minutes came out at the beginning of January, that is what actually triggered this whole correction or bear market. And so we'll have to see what the January Fed meeting minutes actually do to the markets when they're released on Wednesday. They could move the markets quite a bit. So just be careful of that. Uh, that could be really bad. We already saw the December Jan uh, the December. Fed meeting minutes that came out in January were the worst that we had ever seen. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what the January Fed meeting minutes that come out next week show, because if they're bad, that could really cause the markets to go down. Okay, so now the question is, what does all of this mean for the markets? Well, I've already talked about what the futures markets did, and I've talked about what the bond markets did. Now let's talk about the stock market. So the stock market today, when the inflation number initially came out, we saw the stock market tank 2% pre-market. However, during the day, the market actually recovered. In fact, at one point, it was only down 0.01%. It basically recovered all of the losses from the inflation. 
So what that tells me is that the market is pretty much already priced in inflation. It doesn't matter if the February inflation numbers come in at 7.7% or 8%, nobody cares. The markets already have it priced in, so we're good on that. Now, the next issue is why did the markets close down 2% if we didn't care about the inflation numbers? And that's because the Fed basically came out and said, look, we're gonna do a 0.5% rate hike in March, and we're gonna raise interest rates by 1% by July. That is what really scared the markets. That's what caused the markets to go down. Because up until that was said earlier on Thursday, the markets were pricing in a 0.25% rate hike in March, not a 0.5% rate hike. That is twice as fast as what the market was originally predicting. Now, this could have triggered a continual on the bear market that we're current in. Because keep in mind that on the technicals, we never actually recovered from the bear market. On the technicals, we're still in a bear market. We're still dropping. The technicals are still bearish. Uh, we never got any confirmation of a rebound. So it looks like this could cause that continued drop in the markets. Remember what I said a few weeks ago is that when we are in a bear market, the markets don't just go straight down like they did in March of 2020. They stair step down. So we go down for two or three weeks and then we go up and then down and then up and then down and then up and down like that. So uh, we saw the markets drop for about three weeks in January. We've seen the markets go up for about two weeks now, and we could be in for another two or three week drop. So just keep that in mind. Just hold on. Be careful. We could be in for more pain. Now, all of that said, we also have to keep our eyes on the bond markets because as the 10-year treasury rises, that's going to put more downward pressure on the stock market, especially the NASDAQ and the Russell. And as the 10-year treasury drops, that's going to put uh, more increased upward pressure on the stock market. So really, um, after the Fed meeting minutes come out uh, next week on Wednesday, it's really going to be the bond market and the 10-year treasury yield that we've got to keep our eyes on for the next month until the March meeting for the Fed. So that's kind of what we can expect for the stock market over the next few months, at least until the Fed meeting. And then after that, who knows? We'll just have to see. Now, that said, what should you do? Is it time to buy the dip? Should you just sell everything and hold cash? Like, what do we do? So, if we look at the P.E. ratios from an historical standpoint, the small cap P.E. ratios are still at an historically low level. In fact, ever since small caps started crashing back in March of last year, uh, they've been at these historically low levels for months now. So small caps just aren't really dropping that much more. A lot of the small caps that we saw drop through, uh, most of them bottomed out around November and December, and they've just kind of been trading flat for the past few months. Uh, mid caps did come down in January, and we now have mid caps that their PE ratios are finally down to historically low levels also. It's really only the large caps that continue to be trading at high valuations. Now, the key here is that as large caps come down in price, they're going to bring the overall market down with them because the market indices, especially the Dow and the S&P, and to a large part the NASDAQ, are mainly triggered, they're, they're priced based upon the large caps. So if large caps go up, the market overall goes up. If large caps come down, the market overall comes down. It doesn't really matter that much, unless you're talking about the Russell, it doesn't really matter that much what the mid caps and small caps do. So all of that said, if I were looking to buy in right now, which I am, I have been buying some things, I am looking to dollar cost average in to small caps and mid caps that are at historically low valuations. And there are also a few pick and choose large caps that I'd be looking at as well. In fact, there's two that I'm going to talk about in a minute that you might want to consider dollar cost averaging into as well. Now, I am not loading up on anything at this point. I don't care how cheap it is. I don't care if it's got a price sales ratio of one. I don't care if the PE is down to five. I am not loading up on anything. Because as I said before, no matter how low you think a stock can go, it will always go lower during a bear market. And so the problem is I don't know where these things are going to bottom out. I don't know if they're bottomed out now. I don't know if they're going to bottom out a month from now, two months from now, three months from now. I don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm dollar cost averaging in to a few select stocks that are extremely beat down, that are extremely low levels, that have pretty much no debt that have growing revenues, stocks that would perform well as interest rates rise. 
And of course, I'm just holding all of my banking stocks and gold stocks and just waiting for interest rates to rise for those to go up as well. So that's what I'm doing. And that's how a lot of people are playing the market right now is we're just very slowly dollar cost averaging in to plays that are really beat down, but we are hand selecting stocks. We're not just generally doing the overall market. We're certainly not buying into things like QQQ or SPY. It's hand select stocks that are very, very low valuations that we're pretty sure are going to recover. Now, all of that said, I have noticed that the Russell 2000 has been outperforming the overall markets, the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow over the past few days. And I think that's a really good sign that the Russell 2000, which is very mid-cap and small-cap heavy, is really starting to bottom out it's going to not only be the first sector that recovers, it will probably recover the fastest. And so if I'm looking to put money anywhere right now, I'd definitely be looking at the small caps because those are the ones that are beat down the most. Those are the ones that should recover first. And they're also the ones that should recover the fastest. So hopefully that helps you out. Let's get into the two stocks that I am looking at buying that you might want to consider dollar cost averaging into as well. All right, before we talk about these two stocks, I do want to remind you that I am not a financial advisor. Nothing I talk about today is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold. These are just my opinions, which may or may not be accurate. Please do your own research before investing in any asset. And the first stock we're going to talk about is PYPL. This is PayPal. Peter Lynch once said, insiders might sell their shares for any number of reasons, but they buy them for only one. They think the price will rise. And as we can see here on tip ranks, over the past four days, there have been a lot of insider buying at PayPal. Four days ago, the CEO purchased $1 million worth of PYPL. Then three days ago, a director bought half a million dollars worth of PYPL. And then two days ago, another director purchased another $1 million worth of PYPL. Clearly, insiders think PYPL is severely undervalued. Now, as I've mentioned before, PYPL is currently trading below a strong support level that goes all the way back to July of 2019. Fundamentally, PYPL is trading at a forward PE of only 25, which is quite low for a growing tech stock like PayPal. All of this combined has gotten Jeremy with Financial Education excited. He purchased over $100,000 worth of PYPL over the past few days, and he said he's not done buying. Jeremy said he will continue buying PYPL so long as the price is below $150. And the next stock I want to talk about is SOFI. This is SoFi, and they're an online fintech startup. SOFI has continued to struggle even after receiving their banking charter. And the reason is because short sellers have absolutely loaded up on this stock. As you can see on the orange line here, the utilization rate has skyrocketed over the past few months. And now SOFI is at a 94% utilization. By the way, utilization is the number of shares being borrowed by short sellers divided by the number of shares available to borrow. Once the utilization reaches 100%, there are no more shares available to borrow, which means short sellers are unable to short any more shares. Well, at least legally. Now, Keenan Gray said momentum is building for a possible short squeeze on SOFI. And the reason is because SOFI is playing an ad during the Super Bowl. And that ad could lead to a large influx of new users, which in turn could cause the share price to rise. And once the share price starts rising, that could trigger a short squeeze. Also, keep in mind that SOFI reports earnings on March 1st, and the stock might rise in price going into earnings. Now, technically, SOFI remains bearish, so I would be careful on this one, but at least we do have some catalysts coming up. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video and get a lot out of it. Comment down below what stocks you're going to be dollar cost averaging into. And I do want to remind you that during this bear market, we can see a lot of ups and downs in the market. It's very difficult to predict. So it's very important that whatever you do buy, you make sure you get some protections in your portfolio, some hedges, so that you don't lose a lot of money if the market goes down. And that's exactly what we've been helping people do over in the Discord, especially in part of the coaching program. In fact, VG Wizard X said, I have to thank you for info you've been giving. It gave me the info to put some protections. 
basically he's saying that he was able to buy some protections and protect his portfolio from going down. So I really want to uh, invite you to come and join us over at the free Discord, sign up for the coaching program if you want, and get the help that you need to protect your portfolio so you're not losing money if this market continues to go down. Also, I do want to remind you that Webull is offering a promotion right now where if you sign up using my link in the description below and deposit just $1, Webull is going to send you three free stocks worth up to $3,300. You also get $5 when you make your first crypto trade. And if you're interested in transferring from Robinhood over to Webull, Robinhood's going to charge a $75 transfer fee, but Webull will actually reimburse that $75 transfer fee. So you won't actually have to pay anything to actually transfer. And when you do come over to Webull, you're going to get the full pre-market and after hours trading from 4 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, I have a link for that in the description below to get those free stocks and the transfer promotion. Now, if you're not a U.S. resident or if you're looking to trade OTC penny stocks, then I recommend Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is a highly discounted trading platform. Trades start at just one U.S. dollar, one Canadian dollar, four euros, or six Australian dollars, depending upon where you live. And I do want to remind you that I do have material connections with both Webull and Interactive Brokers. So whenever you sign up for either one, not only are you getting a great broker to trade with, you're also helping me to continue to produce these great videos for you. Now finally, I want to remind you to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when I release my next video. I hope you have a lot of success trading, and I will see you on Monday.